You're in Massachusetts. The name of the farm, the business, a little bit about yourself so everyone watching can know about you. Yeah. So um, I uh, farm about 20 minutes outside of Boston when there is no traffic. Um, we are Theo's Market Gardens, formerly uh, Springdale Farm. January 1st, I retired my old family name um, and made way for a new era of my farm, uh, Theo's, to honor my great-grandparents, Jimmy and Maria Theodorus. We are uh, specialty crop growers, fruit, vegetables, um, and then we do some diversified livestock. Um, we have a roadside farm market. Uh, we do a large CSA program um, and some agritourism events and on-farm family events here. Wow. So I, I found you, and I'm going to bring it up on the page here. You, I, Someone tagged me in a Facebook post that you made. Did you make that post? Yes. Okay, let me bring it up here. Hold on. Uh, this is your page, I believe. And let me, when was it? Like last week at some point? Yeah, Um I, I I never would have imagined that it would spread so far. I've had people from all across the globe reach out. I didn't realize that um, the struggles that we are going through here in Massachusetts, which is not really a big agricultural state, um, is something that is uh, shared with people near and far. Here. Okay, here it is. It's long, and I know I'm not going to read it on camera, but basically this Facebook, this Facebook post was shared. Let me look here. Oh, is that correct? 41,000 times? <laughs> yeah, crazy. Wow. So your Facebook post uh, from your farm that you made was shared 41,000 times. Tell me the gist of it. Um, it started out with the, the words 250,000 per acre. So tell me a little bit about what you wrote. Um, well, first and foremost, I only own uh, 52 and a half acres here uh, with my husband and my kids. Uh, we just went through our... A farm transition one year ago, uh, just right before Christmas of 2022, um, and purchased the other half of my family farm um, from my mother and my siblings. And I guess uh, that is not a very common thing for folks to purchase farms in suburbia and then turn around and make a go at farming um, with such a high, uh, I guess, um, mortgage payment per month. Um, so it's been a little... It's, a, it's been a hard road to hoe, uh, but I guess since we have done that, we've been approached by developers from all three in the last month. Um, so, you know, um, the old saying of land rich and money poor to learn what I'm sitting on per acre and its value for development. Um, occasionally, I guess, makes me question why I'm sitting here farming it. Um, so, yeah, yeah that... I heard that that um, value come forward from a couple different folks, and I got up one morning and I was sipping my coffee, sitting behind my computer screen, and wrote that as kind of a general uh, announcement to my customer base because it takes both farmer and consumer to um, keep lands um, and working landscapes in production, and I never would have imagined that it would spread so far. So, what kind of do you even know? What kind of de if developers are contacting you? Is it for housing, industrial, or you're having companies coming at you, do you even, what What are they? Yeah, uh, it, it's a mixed bag actually. So um, mostly houses, uh, The there's a housing development right next door to the farm right now. Um, the average home being constructed, uh, they're not even up yet and they have three reservations and the houses are averaging 1.5 million um, on one acre lots. Uh, so it's mostly houses, uh, custom built homes. Um, but a month ago, I also had a battery storage company approach me about my back acreage um, for battery storage. So, you know, you have the residential and the commercial. You got to keep in mind where I am here in Massachusetts, there are certainly there's about 7000 farms, maybe a little bit under where the definition of small uh, and where I am farming specifically, there is just a handful of us left and it is in suburbia we have two major highways that go um and crisscross through our town that commute to for commuters to make their way in and out of boston um so yeah we're kind of just like in the way of progress i guess or so they say <laughs> yeah but i mean correct me if i'm wrong but it, farming feeds america at least that's what i was always told right yeah i i mean i agree too but i'm uh watching our world change. I mean, people 
aren't reading labels. They want stuff quicker, faster, cheaper. Um, and I don't think that they realize that there is actually like food is grown on a farm. And I, I think people should be reaching for cleaner food. I think people should be reading labels. But at the end of the day, I think they don't care if it comes in an Amazon box and if it was made in a factory. Um, so I don't really know. I, I say that, you know, I'm in my 30s. I've been on my farm my entire life. Uh, we've always been direct to consumer. But I see every year I see a change in the consumer. And I just don't I, I don't know if people appreciate and respect uh, my way of life or the people that work so hard to create a product that is good for you. Yeah. And I, I was ta talking to you before I went live and I had a visit with my doctor recently and she even said that, and, and it's not a conspiracy theory, that the foods we eat are killing us. In other countries, some of this food is not even legal um, to eat. Some of the chemicals and the processes. So I'm trying to get natural, but they're not making it easy. You're right. It's very convenient to go to a McDonald's or to, or to whatever, you know, but the healthy stuff, it, it's its not. The obesity crisis, so eating local, eating fresh is good, but it seems like they're making it more difficult to do so. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a misconception out there that um, local food or fresh market foods cost more. Um, I think people in general don't like to cook like they used to. They're not sitting down for big family meals. They're on the go too much. They want stuff in a package that's ready to eat. Um, so I just, I, I think that, you know, and if you ask an average consumer when they go to the store, do they pick up the box of their go-to item and flip the box over and read the labels? They don't, they don't. And they, if they did, they wouldn't know what half of the ingredients are. Um, so, but yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I grow and produce food. It enters our farm market. We sell to our farm share members, um, but people have to go home and they have to cut those vegetables up and they have to prepare it into a meal. And, you know, you see folks in the supermarkets that are reaching for stuff that's been pre-cut in a factory. Um, so it's just, it's a changing environment. And I don't really know where farms like mine are going to be in the next 10 years. Is there a place for us? That's not good at all. It, well, in my opinion, I know as a journalist, I'm not supposed to give my opinion. I do more so now. But um, and in Michigan, we've had the deal with in Michigan, there's been companies, uh, you know, trying to buy farms for solar panels. You said you had a company contact you for the, the battery. What was it? The battery? The battery yeah. Battery storage, I guess. I I'm, I didn't really read the fine print as to what those batteries were, but they needed uh, five to eight acres. And they liked my property because it was five minutes off the highway. Now, how tempting is it not to just sign it away and just say, hey, give me $5 million or something? <laughs> um, well, I guess uh, there's the times when I'm questioning um, my occupation and why I chose this. Uh, I've been on the farm my entire life. I love it. Um, I, I I love growing, producing food and feeding my community. And I also have a, a, a son. He just turned six a few days ago and a two-year-old. So being outside and living this old-fashioned uh, way of life. I, I love it. Um, and it's kind of a unique uh, upbringing. But um, there's, you know, in 2022, we had a severe drought here in Massachusetts. Yeah. And last year in 2023, I was underwater. So I have now had two extremely bad uh, growing seasons back-to-back. Uh, -back. And like I said, we purchased the farm only a year ago. So to be pulling that weight with Mother Nature playing against us, yeah, there is times that I have questioned it. Um, and, you know, when the, the the customers are maybe belly aching over the price of corn or the box of strawberries, um, you know, while they're sipping on their Starbucks cup of coffee, um, y you know, those are the days where I'm like, what, why am I doing this? I could just sell out and I could be a millionaire times three. <laughs> Yeah, but you you have a deeper passion. You have it, this is who you are, kind of. It's you. There's a there's a bigger vision for you than just the money. It sounds like. Yeah, and I think you know I've I've been able to make a okay living here. The and you know I've said it in the post that went viral. It takes the consumer and the farmer working together to keep land viable and to keep these farms in production. You know, people vote with their food dollars and. 
So when they are making the extra trip to their farm market or their farmer's market or buying the side of beef or choosing the local milk at their local supermarket, that makes a big difference. You're, you're literally impacting somebody's livelihood and way of life and keeping them on their farms. What's the whole deal? Because you see it in the media every so often. Oh, we can eat ants or this or whatever or what's going on? I thought that was a joke at some point, but I see legitimate news stories about like eating insects and what's going on yeah i you know so uh i did a lot with the young farmers and ranchers uh committee in with american farm bureau and i remember being in indianapolis for an ffa convention and i met um a young producer that was getting into the production of bugs and gosh that was probably 10 years ago um and it sounded pretty amazing that what he was describing um and what they were going to do but when he talked about it being a potential food source. I thought, huh, you know, I mean, there's something for everybody and diversifying out of your, you know, routine way of maybe growing corn or soybeans and getting into bugs. And here we are 10, 10 years later, basically, and it's literally approved to be a food source. Um, so it's here, uh, but not many people are talking about it, but I guess it is in some products. So uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I, and people are probably going to purchase it without even knowing what it is, right? That's scary. That's scary. Let me ask you, and, and you may not know the question since you don't do it, how much, like the steak at your, I don't know what food chain, we have a Kroger is our store here. I don't know what the big chain grocery store is where you are, but how much is the, the processed? I mean, how much, how many chemicals are in all of this? There's a lot, right? I mean, that you just find at the gro grocery store. You may not know. Yeah, you don't. I don't know. I'm like, um, I, I, I go to the supermarket very rarely and I'm very fortunate to say off that, that I'm like, you're uh, like, you know, homesteading is like a trend right now. Like I've been one before it was cool. Um, so I don't know. And I usually have, I get to walk right by the fresh fruits and vegetables and I go there just for some staple things. Um, but I, I don't know you, you, when you look at the size of a supermarket, right. You look at the small and the small little area that is produce in your milk and your, your dairy and all that. And then you look at, you know, what takes up the balance of it. So I don't know the answer to that. Um, but it, it would be a great statistic to figure out. Yeah. I, I thought, but uh, yeah, eating my, our, my doctor told me just eat clean, less processed foods, but in this society, especially in this country, they don't make it easy. Like I was watching something, I forget what it was, some other country in some countries, they literally, they go to the market, they get their food in the, in the day, they cook it at night. That's how, that's how they are. And it seems like they're very somewhat healthy people. <laughs> yeah. There's a new, there's a new show out about that. I think like with the, the diets of other countries and I haven't watched it, but a lot of folks have mentioned that we should. It's uh, America, you know, we have always said that we are, we have the strongest, the cheapest, uh, easiest access to food compared to other countries, but at what cost? Exactly. What advice would you have? Because there might be other farmers or in Michigan or wherever across the country. What advice do you have for them? I mean, because they're probably being approached. They're probably dealing with the same issues you are. Um, is it just a personal decision for every family on how to handle all of this? Yeah, I mean, the price tag of the value is definitely enticing. And, you know, I think that farmers will continue to do what they are doing and to carry on with their way of life as long as there's people there that support them. And that that isn't just, you know, voting with your food dollar and making sure that you make the extra chips of the markets and stuff. But those those farmers also need the support system of their local and federal legislation. And, you know, I, I feel like we're 1% Farming is 1% of the population now, and we're often forgotten about when it comes to like all of the business dealings of the state. Um, so I think as long as they have their warriors beside them to like push them along and to stand beside them, um, whether it's shopping at their farm or making sure they're recognized when it comes to new laws and regulations, I think that the farmers will stay. Um, but yeah, it's I the, the dollar value near and far for some of these farm properties and, you know, they... I don't know, they get cultivated out, but we can't forget that they're there. And I think we are living in a culture where oftentimes people do. Because there's not many new farms coming aboard, like truly 
family owned new farm. That's probably not a thing. Yeah, well, we, you know, I'm in my 30s. So when I was in school and I, they used to say, you need to apply yourself better because I was not the best of student. Um, <laughs> they said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to farm. And they said, there's no future in farming. That's, that's what I was told. And I graduated from school in 2006. So that wasn't that long ago. Um, but we, you know, people were encouraged to leave the farm because farming was a hard way to make a living. It wasn't for people that were going to be rich and famous. And it was just this like old school way of living that was, you know, literally dirt farmers. Like that's what people were viewed upon. Um, so we've gotten to this point where, you know, farming is not a hip occupation and it's a really hard way to make a living. I mean, mother nature is your business partner, right? But at the same time, um, we were in this, this, this time where land prices are too high for people to, to purchase a farm and then turn around and farm it um, because of the price of land. So it, it, and the banks, you know, whether it's a farm bank or a local bank, they're, they're not, as willing to help a farmer go and buy a plot of land and then turn around and farm it. They're, they're, they're not, no matter what anybody says, they're not. So farmers have to get creative. They need to diversify. And sometimes they need to leave the farm gate and go find their customer base because a lot of their customers are the ones in the city. Oh, um, like I said, it should feed the country. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, yep. Wow. I just wanted yeah, have you on to talk about that because so interesting, something that's not talked about. And it's a, someone just said in the comments that I'm on, we need to keep foreign interest out of our farmland because I hear the stories like um, China buying up all this farmland. But I don't know. Are they actually farming or they just want the land or someone says Bill Gates actually owns a lot of farmland. What's going on? Do you, any any idea with all of that? I mean, I, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't you know, you, you're reading it right. but. Um... I've heard that there was a big ranch in Texas that was bought with uh, by a foreign country. I heard that Bill Gates is now the number one uh, arable farmland owner in the country. Uh, I, I know a lot of farmers near and wide. I don't know any that have uh, sold out to Bill Gates, but I would be curious to know, you know, you try to have this conversation with some people and they think you're a conspiracy theorist. Uh, so it's really hard to like sit down and have a conversation with somebody. But if you if that is accurate information, it's absolutely scary. Well, and I know in Michigan, for example, that like uh, there is a Chinese battery factory. They're looking to buy a lot of farm property in Michigan. So at least that is at least true in one case I know. And it's to build the solar. The It's going to be a huge facility. And it's a big deal because Michigan's giving them $700 million of taxpayer money. So that's part of the point where you were talking about. And this is my last question to you. What can the citizens do to support you? It's not just buy your products, but it's also to back you politically and to pressure the lawmakers. What can the average person in this country do to help farmers? Well, there, I think it's there's there, there's three pieces to this. I think that folks need to occasionally make the extra trip to their farm market or their farm stands. Uh, maybe go purchase a side of beef from the rancher down the street. Um, and just encourage and support them to keep moving forward and doing more with their farm and remind them that there's a consumer there that will pay a couple extra dollars with their grocery bill just to support their neighbor. Uh, the, legis the legislators, there's very few that when it comes to campaign season turns to their farming community and talks about the food system uh, locally, but also nationally. And I think farmers really, you know, Farmers are really, they like to keep to themselves. My, my occupation, yeah. my people, they like to keep to themselves. And I really think that they need to be more unified with their presentation to the entire population. But then if you don't have, if you're living in a food desert, there's not access to local farms. When you go to a supermarket, read the labels. Make sure you're supporting American farming. Make sure you're reading the fine print and make sure that what you are picking up you know, that is a vote. Everything you reach for on the grocery store shelves, that is a vote. You are encouraging somebody, you know, to produce or do something a certain way. You need to read the fine print and make sure that you are supporting things that you truly believe in. Gotcha. Okay. I appreciate you taking the time.